Okay, I see some more folks filtering in. As you're filtering in, I just want to thank you for being a part of this virtual college fair. Uh, if you would like to ask any of our panelists a question, the best way to do that is down at the bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A button. You can click that and type a question to one institution or a blanket question to all of them, and they'll be able to answer you through that avenue. You are not able to raise your hand or speak and they cannot see you. So again, the Q&A at the bottom of the screen is the best way to ask questions to the different institutions. Uh, and again, your, your microphone and your camera are off. There is going to be um, another evening of these and more sessions, and you can sign up the same place that you signed up for this one. A recording of this will be available at strivescan.com forward slash Illinois. Um, and again, just want to reiterate, the Q&A is the way to communicate to our panelists if you have a specific question for them. Each of them will be speaking for about six minutes, and then we'll have a little bit of a roundtable conversation at the end. Uh, pay attention to your chat as well, as they are going to be putting some useful information in there. And we are going to kick it off with Providence College. Hi, everyone. I am thrilled to kick us off. My name is Megan O'Rourke. I'm the Associate Dean and Coordinator for Midwest Recruitment at PC. Very long, fancy title. Essentially what it means is that I'm based here in the Midwest. I live in um, just outside the city of Chicago and I work with students all throughout the state of Illinois and I'm so excited to chat with you about Providence College tonight. So as you can see on the screen, as you can see behind me, um, this is our main building at Providence College and for those of you joining that maybe aren't as familiar with PC, I'm going to walk you through just some general info, stats and figures and I'll pop my info, my contact info in the chat should you need anything beyond tonight. So. Providence College. It's located in Providence, Rhode Island. We are in one of the many neighborhoods in Providence and less than 10 minutes away from the city's center. For those that have never made it out to um, Providence before, it's a couple of hours on a plane, not terribly far. And the campus itself is beautiful. It looks just like what a traditional college campus would look like. We are, to give you some perspective, about 30 minutes or so from Newport, an hour from Boston, and three hours away from New York City. Typically students that are interested in PC um, from the Midwest, from Illinois specifically, are looking for schools that are a little bit farther away, but still want a really strong sense of community. And Providence College or PC as I'm probably gonna call it tonight is definitely where you'll find that strong sense of community. We, we like to call ourselves kind of the Friar family. Our head basketball coach termed that um, came up with that term for us. And I think it really encompasses the, the experience that you'll have while you're with us. So let's get into some facts and figures about PC. We were founded in 1917. We were um, founded by and currently still run by Dominican Friars. Now they are kind of part of the larger community of Dominicans. But what makes us unique is that the Friars are the ones that founded um, Providence College and then subsequently are still um, in charge of what the president is actually a Dominican friar. Now, Pro Providence as an institution is a Catholic school, just like a couple of my, my fellow um, presenters here tonight. I think the, the one kind of quick point to make about Dominican education is the idea that faith and reason can coexist together. So part of the experience that you'll have in terms of your academic curriculum is a set of core classes, English and math and history and humanities and science and philosophy and theology. It's important for us that we kind of educate all of those different components and that they all can coexist in your time while as a student. Now you can see on the screen the number of undergraduate students that we have. Our total enrollment with our graduate students puts us just under 5,000. That's a really great size for us. I think it gives you the ability to interact and engage with your fellow classmates, with the professors teaching classes, and feel like you can engage and have um, kind of a hands-on experience while you're in the classroom. One quick fact that I like to point out is that, that note at the bottom of the screen, 91% of our students, our freshmen, return as sophomores. That retention rate is really high and we're really proud of the fact that we provide such an engaging experience that our students wanna come back as sophomores. Here you'll see our list of majors. And I wanna point out that this is a lot of information and I am gonna provide my contact info if you're like, what did that Providence rep say? So we have three different schools, arts and sciences, business and professional studies. You can see professional studies is a little different than what you might expect it to be 
social work, education, health policy and management are there. Business is a big area for us as are some of our programs in arts and sciences. We are a liberal arts school. So that's where you'll find that combination of a liberal arts education in, in correlation with your finance degree or your health policy management degree. We want you to have it all. We want you to be a critical thinker and a solid writer and a solid communicator because we know that those are things that employers really look for when they get into interviews with you, whether it's for an internship or a future career path. Now you can put together a double major, a major and a minor, all of those things to kind of build a program that makes sense for you and your future goals. Know that though your education is not only taking place in the classroom, it's also gonna take place outside of the classroom in a few different ways. Some of that is going to be through research and 37% of our students in recent years have worked with a faculty member on a research project. Now, obviously that's gonna be your bio majors and your chem majors, but we have students in education and in theater and in psychology doing really cool research programs and research projects based on a question that they wanna answer or a problem that they'd like to solve. So it's really cool to see them interacting and engaging with faculty in that way. If research isn't your speed, Internships are another great option and most of our students are completing an internship or career relevant experience before they graduate. It's important for us that you have that hands on. Okay, this is how this happens in real life so that you're really prepared and a competitive applicant to whatever job or path you'll take after you graduate from PC. One thing that always comes up when I do presentations is um, questions about studying abroad. We pride ourselves on offering a really wide variety of programs. 100% of your financial aid is transferable, which is great. Now, Providence itself is an awesome city. I've mentioned that you're a part of the city. You can engage with it in a lot of different ways. We have lots of student organizations, 120 different student organizations, Division I athletics, club sports, and the city itself. And that's really the appeal is that you're getting all of these different things in the four years that you're gonna be spending on campus. And hopefully when you come visit, um, which we will be able to visit hopefully um, in the near future to get you to campus, to get to see both the campus itself and the city of Providence. Just a quick point about our application process, um, deadlines and things, we can get to those later, but know that we are a test optional school. We've been test optional for 15 years. Academics is really what we consider along with essay activities um, and letters of recommendation as part of the process. I'm gonna pop my contact information on the screen. Should you need anything, let me know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Loyola University, Maryland. Hi everybody, good evening. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm gonna to go ahead and share my screen as well. Let's see. All right, you're coming on a journey with me. Here we go. Okay, so my name is Kelly Lucier. I'm the Associate Director of Loyola University, Maryland. Uh, I am a Loyola alum. I graduated in 2015, and I've worked in the admission office for the six years since. And I'm really fortunate to get to hop on a plane, usually, and come see you all out in Illinois. We recruit very heavily from the Midwest, and so we're able to um, spend some time in cities outside of the Northeast, which is always really fun for me, but great for you too, to learn a little bit more about a uh, college a little further away. Um, like Megan said, if you're looking to go to the East Coast, we are ready to welcome you to Baltimore. So Loyola was founded in 1852. We are a Jesuit Catholic University, a little different from the Dominicans, but not that different. Just like them, we have a Jesuit priest as our president at Loyola. And where you're really going to see that Jesuit faith come through is in our students' um, sense of community. Their devotion to serving the community around us and the world. And also we're going to really heavily emphasize the value of interdisciplinary study. Um, the Jesuits for 500 years, they've been founding schools and the big goal of those schools is to make sure that students are well-rounded people. And they talk about the idea of cura personalis or care for the whole person. So yes, we are concerned with, and we are going to focus on your mind and the development and growth of it. And we're also going to talk about your spirit, your body, your emotional well being. All of that is very much a part of what we do. Um, we are located right in, down, in uh, the center of the city, about 15 minutes from downtown, which is that beautiful waterfront area that you see pictured here. So we have a um, 
you know, tree-lined campus, very, very residential, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and we're only about 35 minutes from Baltimore, Washington International Airport. So really easy to hop a quick flight home um, and be able to, you know, head home for a long weekend like fall break or Easter, but also really feel like you are in the city and able to access all that it has to offer. I want to share a little bit of info about our um, student body and the opportunities that are available to them because there are many. We have just under 4,000 undergraduate students. The average class size is 20 and we have a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio. And what that really means in practice is that when you're a student at Loyola, the largest class you would ever, ever, ever take is introduction to biology or introduction to psychology. And the reason is those are the two most popular majors for incoming first year students. So those classes might be 50 or 60 people. And other than those two, we really don't have classrooms that fit more than 30 students or so. So most of our classes are capped at 25 or 30 students, although they will run all the way down to just one or two people. My fun fact about my Loyola experience is always that I had a professor teach me a class and I was the only student and it was the best class. And we met on Friday afternoons and I really enjoyed that personal attention. And so I know that's available for you at Loyola as well. We have, in terms of student life, we have a division one athletic program, 18 men's and women's teams. Um, really, really fun to go out to Ridley Athletic Complex, um, which is our big lacrosse and soccer stadium. It overlooks the city of Baltimore, great way to really dive into the school spirit. We want to make sure that students are able to connect with each other and have clubs and activities that they enjoy and that excite them and that make college really fun, that stuff that happens outside of the classroom. So there are 200 plus uh, clubs and organizations that are student run, covering everything from identity and affinity groups to philosophy club or the public relations student society. We're also very residential. More than 80% of our students live on campus all four years. The reason that they don't leave campus is that after your, so your uh, first year as a sophomore, junior, or senior, you will most definitely be living in an apartment. So you're able to have that kind of independence, living with friends in an apartment of your own right on campus. I also just always want to plug our study abroad programs, which are super popular. We see about 60% or so of our students study abroad. We have flagship programs in Newcastle, England, in Bangkok, Thailand, and in Rome, Italy. And then we also have another two dozen or so programs available to our students. Uh, we have over 30 majors, over 40 minors to choose from, a couple unique and more um, kind of interdisciplinary programs that I like to highlight, forensic studies innovation and entrepreneurship. Sustainability management is our newest major in the business school. And we also offer an environmental and sustainability studies minor that is great to pair with all different areas. A couple quick facts on how to apply to Loyola. We are Common App exclusive. You can find us there with hundreds of our fellow friends. We are also going to automatically review every student who applies for admission for merit-based scholarship. We are going to recommend that every single student also apply for need-based financial aid because we know that over 90% qualify. We also offer students the opportunity to apply to honors and scholars programs as they're coming in in their first year. There's a university honors program, there's a business honors program, and a scholars program for students who will major in the applied sciences. So that includes computer science, physics, math and statistics, and data science. Uh, this kind of profile has some info on our students and what their average in, um, stats are coming in from high school. And you'll note we are also test optional. And then finally, I always wanna share that we are really, really fortunate to have this beautiful campus. We'd love to welcome you. We are open for tours. We're typically open uh, Monday through Friday and several Saturdays per month. We are also open all summer long. So if you're looking to make a trip when the school year ends, we'd love to see you. And we're offering lots and lots of online opportunities to connect. And I would love to talk with you personally. So I'll put my info in the chat, but I'm always available for a one-on-one -on -one convo or something um, if you wanna talk with your family. I am more than happy to do that and look forward to reading your application and welcoming you to Loyola. Thanks everybody. All right, thank you, Kelly. Next up, we have Dickinson College. 
Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Rylan Good, Associate Director of Admissions here at Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, which is in the middle of the state of Pennsylvania, coming to you live from my apartment, which I never thought I'd be doing, but here we are. Um, so real quick, just to make sure that we're all on the same page and to set some baseline knowledge of Dickinson, um, Dickinson, we have around 2,400 students um, coming from all around the world. Um, and so that means that your average class size at Dickinson is only going to be about 14 students per class. Um, and so we're, we're proud to say that we have an eight to one student to faculty ratio. Um, for those history buffs in the room, um, Dickinson was actually the first college chartered once the United States became a country back in 1783. Um, and so we were actually founded by Dr. Benjamin Rush, a signer of the Declaration of Independence, making us the 16th oldest institution in the entire country. Um, so I really wanna spend my remaining five minutes talking about what makes Dickinson different. And so I'm gonna talk about two main points, and that's gonna be first, our global engagement. And so as you walk onto our campus, you're going to see this global signpost. And even though Carlisle, Pennsylvania is home, um, Dickinson actually operates 18 of its own global programs in 15 different countries. So this means we have faculty and staff all around the world ready to welcome Dickinsonians um, abroad. And so about 65% of our students study abroad, including about 50% of our STEM students and about 60% of our student athletes. Um, and that has actually landed us in the number two spot on Princeton Review for the most popular study abroad programs at an undergraduate institution. Um, you don't have to go to our global programs um, as we have uh, over 50 total study abroad options for you. So if you know you wanna travel and get out and see the world, Dickinson's definitely the place for that. But let's say you never leave campus, um, which is okay. Um, so Dickinson, we also wanna integrate international and global perspectives into your Dickinson education. And one way of doing that is that we do have a unique requirement that every student at Dickinson studies up to three classes of a world language. Unlike many of your high schools where you might have two, maybe three languages, Dickinson's proud to offer 13 world languages. Um, and so fun fact, we were actually the first college in the entire country to offer modern world languages back in 1790. And so if you wanna try Arabic or German or Chinese or Japanese or Hebrew, you can do that at Dickinson even if you've never taken a language class of that language in high school. The second thing I wanna talk about that makes Dickinson very different is our fight against climate change. Um, as I talk with high school juniors and seniors all around the world, and I asked them, what is the greatest challenge facing your generation? Many of them, many of you say climate change. And so I'm proud to say that last year in 2020, Dickinson became one of only eight colleges or universities in the entire country not to be contributing to climate change. And we've officially gone carbon neutral. And so that's landed us in the number one spot for our sustainability efforts. But what I appreciate about Dickinson is we try to layer sustainability into not only our curriculum, but also our campus. And so my favorite part of our campus is actually about six miles away. Um, it is a 180 acre organic certified farm. And so out at the farm, um, our students grow up to 100,000 pounds of organic food. Some of which they'll sell at the farmer's market in downtown Carlisle. They'll set up a uh, pizza shop outside on Britain Plaza. Um, or you eat the food in the resident or in the cafeteria. And so if you, if I could recommend one Instagram account to follow of Dickinson's, it would be the farm for delicious food and the cutest animals that you'll ever see. So eventually, you know, once you get through a Dickinson education, um, we want to load it up with experience. So 98% of our students um, are employed completing a professional internship or attending graduate school within just one year of graduation. In the top right corner, if you're thinking about law school, 94% of our students were accepted into law school. If you're thinking about medical school, 95% of our students were accepted into medical school. And the logos in front of you are where Dickinsonians end up working. Um, we're also a top 10 um, Fulbright producing liberal arts college, along with a top Peace Corps producing liberal arts college. And so we understand that no matter what you study at Dickinson, you're going to go off and have a successful and fulfilling career. And then finally for admissions and financial aid, 
Um, for this past year, Dickinson was one of the few colleges that actually switched from test optional to test blind. So what that meant in the spirit of equity, um, we did not look at any students test scores, um, even if they submitted them. So if they had a 1600 as their admissions counselor, I would not have seen that. In terms of scholarships, we offer between 15 and $35,000 in merit scholarships. And then for need-based aid, Dickinson is one of the few institutions in the entire country to be able to meet 100% of your family's financial need. And so between a combination of need and merit, we want to make a Dickinson um, education affordable. And then finally, we have two deadlines, um, November 15th for early decision one, and then regular decision and early decision two on January 15th. So I'll throw my um, contact information in the chat. And then if you have any questions about Dickinson, um, hit me up on the Q&A or the chat and we'll talk there. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have Sacred Heart University. Hi there, everyone. Hi to all the Illinois students tonight uh, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, I don't know if any of you are in Chicago, but I hope that river is running green today. Um, I am Kim Perrette. I'm from Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. Sacred Heart is a, Ro a private Roman Catholic university and Fairfield is actually about an hour outside of New York City and about two and a half hours from Boston. So we have a beautiful suburban campus. It's very modern modern looking and um, you know it's great to be in that situation and close proximity to two great cities. So I want to go over um, a little bit about our academics first. We do have five different colleges of study, our College of Arts and Sciences, which houses our School of Communication, Media and the Arts. And uh, one of our most popular majors in that area is sports communication. It also houses our School of Social Work. We have our Isabel Farrington College of Education, which has elementary and secondary education majors. Our Jack Welch College of Business and Technology, which houses our School of Computer Science and Engineering, which includes uh, some popular majors like game design and cybersecurity. We have our Davis and Henley College of Nursing. It's a direct entry program. It's very competitive, but ranked best in Connecticut. And also our College of Health Professions, will which I'll talk a little bit more about um, in a minute. We do have two campuses, our main campus and our West Campus, which is uh, a pretty new addition in the past few years. We have 5,600 undergraduate students and a total population of 8,400, including our grad students. Um, we are ranked in the top 10 for happiest students. I always like to put that in there. And we offer two campuses actually abroad in Ireland and Luxembourg. And then we have programs uh, with about 30 other countries for study abroad. Uh, we offer individualized attention in the classroom and our average class size is 22 students, student teacher ratio 13 to one. I want to talk a little bit about our College of Healthcare Professions because uh, even though there are only three undergraduate degrees in this college, we offer a lot of graduate programs in these areas and students are able to uh, be pre-admitted into these grad programs as an incoming freshman. So depending on your uh, GPA, your uh, science and math uh, classes that you've taken and, and grades that you've made in those, uh, you're able to be pre-admitted into these master's level and doctorate programs. One of the most important things you can do when you get to college is to get involved um, in a lot of areas outside of academics. So we offer many choices for you. We have many clubs and organizations. We are ranked number 10 in the country for students uh, most engaged in community service. Um, this is something that our students really, we've noticed have a heart for service and there are so many opportunities for you to get involved to give back. We have a very active student government, a lot of academic clubs and, com and competitions that we go to um, with other universities as well. We have 14 fraternity and sorority life organizations, and we are a very big athletic school. We have over 33 Division I NCAA teams, over 35 club sports teams. We actually are just broke ground yesterday on our brand new ice hockey and skating arena, and that will be ready in about a year and a half. So we're super excited about that. And I know some of you Illinois students um, 
will definitely want to take advantage of that. Uh, we also have a big area of performing arts, a lot of uh, band, orchestra, guard, choral programs, dance programs, theater arts, musical theater, and straight acting as well. Lots of um, active, active uh, campus ministry programs and many multicultural organizations. We just opened our new diversity and inclusion center as well. We have uh, a lot of new campus additions. We're a really growing university. So I just wanted to show a few photos here. We have a, a new diner that opened in 2017. It's really cute. It's next to our football field. Um, students love hanging out there. We have a new um, radio station and public safety facility. Our new Bobby Valentine Athletic Recreation Center is amazing. There's a golf simulator, a bowling alley, a rock climbing wall, and every fitness equipment you can imagine there. And the lower uh, left hand picture is a picture of our newer West Campus, which was the former headquarters of GE. And our uh, university upper quad right there in the center is our newest residence halls and we're still building. Um, we're building a lower quad as well. So beautiful new residence halls for you to enjoy as well. We uh, have a community theater in the middle of Fairfield. So our performing arts students can perform there in the community and also um, in our own theater on campus. So living at uh, SHU, uh, again, just to mention these great residence halls that we have, uh, we do require the first two years that you live on campus, but you're certainly welcome to live all four years. We have many virtual tours available on YouTube and on our website, and uh, please check those out because there are some really amazing um, living quarters. And uh, I will put my information in the um, chat box for you but uh, we'd love to have you come and visit. We are open for tours. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Next up, we have the Catholic University of America. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is James Dewey Rosenfeld, and I'm the Dean of Undergraduate Admission at Catholic University. So I'm just going to see if I can share my screen here. And so I'll take you through a few things that I think makes Catholic University really interesting and unique for us. So first of all, where we're located. Greetings from Washington, D.C., you know, an amazingly exciting, diverse, you know, um, place to live, um, you know, so we're located right and right on the corner of our campus is actually a metro stop. Um, so you're three stops from Capitol Hill, you're six stops from the White House and monuments. Um, so that's a really great balance of what happens on campus and off campus. Um, you know, obviously a huge amount of activities and events um, run for everyone. It's a great place for students because so many events are actually free. Um, in Washington, D.C. as well. Obviously, as you see, 98% of our students live on campus, and we do have a three-year residency requirement on campus. Um, you know, we're three miles north of Capitol Hill. There's a great bike and walking path that will take you right, basically right next to campus, all the way to Capitol Hill as well. Um, you know, who's going to be going to school with you here? So we have about 3,300 undergraduate students, and then we also have a graduate in law school as well of about 2,600 students. 80% of our students are Catholic. And then beyond that, in terms of ethnic and racial diversity, it's a, it's a really interesting place because we're drawing students from all over the world. Um, you know, being located in Washington, DC, it's such a small district, generally speaking, that we're pulling most of our students from a lot of different places. Um, you know, another thing that makes us unique as a small school to have nine undergraduate schools and almost 80 different undergraduate degrees to choose from. So some unique programs, especially at a smaller school, School of Engineering, School of Architecture. Um, you know, so these are things that you can get as a degree on, the, on, on our campus for all four years, as opposed to having a three plus two program in conjunction with another campus tend to have very small classes, you know, so a seven to one student to faculty ratio class uh, average class size under 20 students and all of your teachers will be faculty members you know so the same person that you have in class will be the same person that you can go to for extra help if you need it as well what's unique for us and we started a couple of years ago is this idea of really utilizing our you know dc location and the understanding that there are so many research and internship and professional opportunities there. So we've joined um, our academic and professional advising into one program that starts from day one on campus. So you'll be joined with the same advisor you'll have for all four years, unless you make a major move in terms of a different major. Um, 
you know, so you'll always be with someone who knows that particular field and is an expert in that area and can really guide you towards research opportunities on campus and then internship opportunities off campus as well. Really get your foot in the door, no matter what it is that you're thinking about doing down the line. Um, you know, for, for our students, over 60% have two internships or more. Um, and over 90% of our students have at least one internship while they're a student at Catholic University. So obviously, being in a place like DC, you have a lot of international and national headquarters for companies, you have a lot of media outlets, um, and a lot of our students, you know, obviously with the DC location, will intern on Capitol Hill or in the White House as well. A lot of opportunities outside the US, you know, obviously, this is a huge push for a lot of our students, you know, not only do they want to be in the nation's capital, but explore what's outside the US as well. So we work with 115 different colleges and universities in 37 different countries. And about 40% of our students will study abroad for at least one semester. So typically, you have the option of a semester, a year, and then for some of our programs, you can do summer programs as well. Um, you know, even so, even for our School of Nursing, um, students within the School of Nursing can still study abroad. They usually work with the university in Australia, but then we also have summer programs in Dublin and Rome as well. A bit about campus life. So we have over 100 clubs and organizations on campus and a ton going on throughout the course of the week. You know, so 40 events going on um, that can really, I think, give students the opportunity to meet a lot of different people on campus. Um, you know, the, the more you get out of your room and the more people that you meet, the, the greater the experience you're gonna have on campus. Campus ministry and community service are major um, players as well. Um, a big impact on our campus is our college athletics as well. Catholic University has a tremendous tradition of athletic success on campus. What's great for us, we're a division three school. So, you know, you may be playing a sport, and you may be one of 30% of our varsity students on campus, but then you're also going to know if you go to a game, you're gonna be cheering on your friends, your classmates, um, your roommates at those games. So that's a really nice dy dynamic to have as well. In addition to varsity athletics, a lot of club sports, intramural sports, um, and then we have two fitness centers on campus as well. So a bit about our application process. Um, we have an early action, um, and early decision deadline, early decision one deadline of November 1st. And then for January 15th, both our early decision two and regular decision deadlines for our application. Um, you know, that May 1st enrollment deadline that you may see some of your friends who are seniors in, in, in high school right now, you know, thinking about and starting to choose their classes, that's going to be the same deadline except for our early decision programs. What do we look for in our application review process? So obviously, the biggest piece is going to be what you do in the classroom on a daily basis. You know, that's going to be the first piece that we're really taking a look at. The other, the other pieces are what makes you tick, you know, the person who you are? What do you do outside the classroom? How do you like to spend your time? What are you thinking of doing when you're at college, you know, in and out of the classroom? Um, we do not charge an application fee for our application. We are also test blind in the admission process. You know, the test blind change came this year from formerly a test optional policy, just wanting to make sure we were really equitable. But for us, it seems to be the best policy. You know, we saw a really academically talented class admitted this year. Um, so we saw that it did not affect us in any negative way at all. So here's a little bit about our um, merit awards. So I will put my information in the chat. And so just in case you need anything else, you can always feel free to reach out and I can put you in touch with the best person. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next up, we have Penn State University. All righty, bear with me, just trying to share my screen here. All right, start the timer. Let us begin. Hello, everyone. My name is Eric Colon Saez Jr., and I'm the Assistant Director of Multicultural Outreach at Penn State University, and I'm also a very pen proud Penn State alum. So let's talk about a little about Penn State. I know this is a very busy slide, and I just really wanted to highlight a few things. At Penn State, we pride ourselves on our undergraduate research our unique campuses, over 275 academic majors and more. One of the best ways to expand upon your academics is through research. Penn State is an R1 institution, which means we receive significant funding from the federal government, over $1 billion annually for research. And there are research opportunities in almost every academic area of interest, not only in the lab, but outside the lab as well, and at every one of our single campuses. This means that you all can start research as early as your freshman year. 
How about our uh, career services office? Uh, Penn State offers a top ranked career service office, which provides services such as resumes, mock interviews, headshots, and even more. And they host a career fair that's held uh, annually, twice a year annually, in the spring and the fall at the Bryce Jordan Center. And it's one of the largest east of the Mississippi. And here you have access to over 4,500 employers, including most of them are Fortune 500 companies that are looking specifically to recruit Penn Staters. And you probably see, what's this 1%, Edward? Well, Penn State is ranked the top 1% amongst the best universities in the world by the Center for World University Rankings. And not only for the quality of education, but also our research opportunities available to, us, to our students. And just, just to give you a frame of reference, this is about 1% of the 18,000 universities across the globe. Study abroad, Penn State is a strong supporter of the study abroad experience. With over, we have over 300 programs in over 50 countries, which range from a traditional to embedded programs. So you can spend all the spring break to a full semester or even a full year studying abroad. With over 275 academic majors and 185 uh, minors offered at 20, at, excuse me, at 20 of our, our undergraduate campuses as well. And think about our, our, our unique undergraduate campuses. So we have a 20 campus system. So there's one Penn State, but Penn State is unique because our 20 undergraduate campuses allow uh, classes to range in size from 800 students all the way to 46,000 students at University Park. So your classes can be a small, rural, or, it, or in an urban setting, and all of them offer their own four-year degrees. So we're just one university, one degree that's geographically dispersed. And finally, we have over 1,200 clubs and organizations, and 900 of those just being at University Park and, uh, by itself. So let's talk about the next step, the application process. So there's really three ways to apply to Penn State, the coalition app, the common app, and the My Penn State. So if you're applying for more than one university, we say apply using the coalition app and the, co the common app or the coalition app. However, you will still be required to create a My Penn State account. Penn State doesn't have a preference over each one, any one of them. Also the SWAR, our self-reported academic uh, record. The SWAR requires you to take your high school transcripts, 9th through 11th grade, and you're scheduled for 12th grade and enter that information manually into your academic report. Test scores, guess what? Penn State is currently test optional to, through 2023. Except for students interested in the pre-medical program or the medical major, test optional means you have the opportunity to decide whether or not you wanna include your test scores. And then the final part is your My Penn State profile. This is important because it'd be a one-stop shop for us. It allows you to check your status of your application, monitor your application checklist, and also the first place you'll be notified of an admissions decision. So let's talk about your estimate your eligibility. Please don't be alarmed. This is an example of the of academic breakdown of students that were in your shoes last year. And this is a middle 50% a snapshot, okay? So as you can see, obviously, University Park is a little bit more competitive to get in based off of GPA versus our Commonwealth campuses. And so, and since we're test optional, we will be looking heavily on your GPA in the classes that you're taking. So let's talk about the admissions timeline here. So August 1st, the application really opens. Uh, we have early action. So November the 1st is my early action deadline, which means this is your best chance of, a, of admission to get your first choice campus. It also means you have a non-binding agreement decision by December 24th. So that's November the 1st for early action. October 1st is when the FAFSA opens, and you will need to fill out your FAFSA in order to receive any kind of financial aid. And it's also recommended that you fill out your FAFSA by December 1st to really maximize your uh, financial aid opportunities and to, hopefully get, and to hopefully get that award notification early February, then late February. Costs. All right. So to help you estimate the cost of your attendance, here's the 20, 2021 tuition rate for university parking campuses. And these in numbers include tuition, room, and board. As you can see, there is a difference in tuition uh, between University Park and our Commonwealth campuses because it costs a little bit more to run a campus with 46,000 students compared to smaller campuses. So you can see there's significant cost savings by starting out at our Commonwealth campus and using our two plus two program, which means you can start out at any of the other 19 campuses and transfer to University Park your junior and senior year. And to really help you better estimate your, your cost to attend Penn State, please visit us at tuition.psu.edu. So I want to thank you for your time. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to put those in the chat. And I think I made it my time with 11 seconds to spare. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Okay, so if I could have all of the panelists turn their cameras on. Share my screen. Okay, so in the same order that you presented, if you could tell us what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Great question. I think my advice to you all, especially for the schools that are um, requiring essays is to take some time with the essay. It inherently is an English exercise. So spelling and grammar, that stuff counts. Have somebody take a look at it, but recognize it doesn't have to be formatted like an English paper. Um, we're happy to help too. That's what people like the panelists are here for. We're happy to help answer questions and, and provide resources for you as you go through the process. Um, I think my favorite advice to share with students is even if you don't know which specific schools you might be interested in visiting and touring, go out and take advantage of all the schools you have available in close driving distance to you. So you can go feel out what a 4,000 versus a 40,000 student campus feels like. That can be a really helpful way to start framing your college search rather than looking online, seeing all our beautiful virtual tours, and then realizing there's this specific thing about this type of campus that I'm really excited about, and that is going to drive my decision. Um, so go, you know, drive an hour or two, take a look at the different types of campuses available within that radius, and then go look for campuses similar to that further away and come see us for a visit. So I would say um, so use social media, but dig deeper past the main institution's uh, Instagram account. If you're interested in outdoor things, find their outing club Instagram, because you're really going to get a more authentic, student-driven um, account of what's happening at that institution. So you kind of dig a little bit deeper beyond the main uh, institution social media sites. Hi everybody. Uh, my advice is to do exactly what you're doing now and start early. Um, you being a part of this presentation tonight is opening up your eyes to a lot of different universities that you may have never heard of before. Um, I'd also say um, the Common App allows you to apply to 20 different schools. Um, I think that's too many personally. I would say more like seven to 10 is plenty. So uh, just be sure you're keeping each uh, university's deadlines and uh, different requirements um, set apart from the others. And for me, I would say, you know, I think a really good match to the institution is important. Um, you know, rankings don't make a great fit for you personally. You know, there are about 2,500 four-year institutions out there. And I think if you're someone who works hard and knows what you want and has these goals to achieve, find the place that's the best fit for you personally, academically, um, you know, financially and a good fit for your family, because you're going to be able to be successful at a lot of different places. I think my advice would be definitely do your research. Um, not only just look at the Instagram feeds, um, however, participate in those virtual tours, virtual experiences. But uh, I think one of my colleagues said, you're on here tonight. Obviously, you're starting early, being very um, proactive in the process but then also remember uh you know I, I always say narrow it down to your, your top five schools as well you know you have your your dream school your second and then you know your your safe school so i would say really narrow it down to your top five and focus most of your attention on uh navigating those top five schools and, and learning about those top five all right awesome advice from our panelists uh, thank you students for joining us. Uh, as you are leaving, just be mindful that we'll ask you a quick four question survey that will appear. There are more sessions available. This is going to be available because it was recorded. So if there's any information or information in the chat that you uh, need to get and you weren't able to, it will be available with that recording. So thank you panelists and thank you students and best of luck. Have a good night.